Hello and welcome to this demonstration where I will show you how to use ArtCam Express and a CNC machine to design and create your own birdhouse. Now the RSPB recommend that you use wood 15mm thick for this. The first thing you're going to want to do is open up a new model and I'm going to specify the dimensions for width of 1500, a height of 1000 and a thickness of 15. If your CNC machine cannot cope with these dimensions or you do not have a piece of wood this big, you can simply create all the different walls and sections separately and then put them together later. So once the model is opened, you're going to want to start to create vectors which will help define the tool paths in order to cut this out using the CNC machine. The first thing I'm going to create is the front wall of this nesting box. And to do this, I'm just going to use the Create Rectangle tool. I'm going to specify the dimensions of a width of 350 millimeters, a height of 200 millimeters, and then I'm just going to select create. I'm going to center this in the middle of the model by using the centering model icon, and you can see it's been brought into the center. So on the front wall, I'm going to put a hole for the birds to go in and out of. I'm going to use a hole of 32 millimeters, which would attract house sparrows. So I'm just going to use the create circle tool to create a circle of radius 32 millimeters. I'm just going to select create and then again center this in the middle of the model. Now this hole wants to be 125 millimeters higher than the bottom of the nesting box so that cats cannot reach in and grab little birds. So I'm just going to zoom in and then use the measure tool to measure the distance from the bottom of the circle to the bottom of the front wall. Now as you can see, this distance is 68 millimeters. So we're going to need to move the circle up 57 millimeters. So I'm just going to select cancel, select the circle, and select the transform tool. And then I'm going to specify a new Y origin position of minus 443. And as you can see, the circle has moved up to give that correct distance. Now the RSPB recommend that you put on ventilation holes in order for better circulation of air through the nesting box. So I'm going to put a couple of these on the front of this design and disguise them as windows. So I'm going to use the Create Rectangle tool and this time I'm going to draw it freehand. I'm just going to click and drag until I'm happy with the dimensions of this. And then I'm going to select Create. Then I'm going to use the Create Arc tool, click on one corner drag across to the other and it should snap to the sides and then remove the cursor up in order to drag out this semicircle. I'm just going to zoom in and then I'm going to use the trim vector tool and trim this line here. Next I'm going to select these two vectors using the shift button and then use join vectors with a line. Now this will close the vector off and enable us to use it for a toolpath. Now as we have this front wall centered in the middle of the model, we can select this vector, use the mirror objects tool and mirror this across the model and it will create a symmetrical window on the other side. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create the side panels of the nesting box. And for simplicity I'm going to place these using first angle projection to show where they are relative to the front wall. So if you're American, you may wish to try standing on your head and looking through a mirror and it may make more sense to you. You also may wish to reposition these in your design to make the placing more efficient on your piece of material. So I'm just going to create a rectangle again. This time I'm going to give it a width of 250 millimeters and a height of 200 millimeters. I'm just going to select create fit the model to the window, bring this new rectangle into the center using centering model, then I'm going to open up the transform tool so I can move this to the side. I'm just going to use the arrow keys to move this out. So I'm just going to use the create polyline tool. I'm going to snap this to the middle of the top of the rectangle and then I'm going to click and then holding the control button so it snaps it to the vertical I'm just gonna draw a line which is roughly 
125 millimeters, like so. And right clicking to confirm this. And I'm going to select the create polyline again. I'm going to make sure that the draw smooth polylines box is unchecked. Then I'm going to snap it to one corner. I'm going to snap it to the top of the vector and then snap it to the other corner. And then again, right clicking to confirm. We can now delete this guide vector and use the trim vector tool to get rid of the top of the rectangle. We now need to select both of these two new vectors and connect these vectors with a line. And this again will create a closed vector in order for us to use a CNC machine to cut this out. On this design I'm going to create a balcony. And to do this I'm just going to create a polyline going from one side of the model, holding control to snap this to the horizontal all the way across to the other side. And then holding control, I'm just going to drag this up slightly so we have the effect of the top rail of the balcony. And then I'm going to use the create ellipse tool. So to do this I'm just going to hold down on the create circle tool, scroll across to the create ellipse, and then I'm just going to by hand just select in the middle of the gap and just drag up and out like so. Selecting create when I'm done. Then I'm going to use the block copy and rotate tool and I'm going to block copy this with a gap of 10 millimeters between each of the objects. I'm going to create 12 columns and one row. I'm going to select apply and as you can see we now have the balcony outline. So I'm just going to create one more ventilation hole on this side of the wall. So I'm just going to use a create rectangle tool, create the rectangle and then use the arc tool again and repeat the process. Like so. Then I'm just going to move this so it's in the centre of the wall. Now because the two side walls are actually going to be exactly the same, we can just select all the vectors that make up this side wall and then just mirror across the model. So if we open the mirror objects tool and then mirror across model, you'll see we now have the two side walls. We can then create the back wall and we can do this by just selecting the outer vector of the front wall, selecting control and just dragging this out to the right, like so. Now as you can see we now have an outline for the four walls. So I'm just going to select all four of these and then select center in model. So the next thing I'm going to do is going to create the roof for this birdhouse. So again I'm just going to use the create rectangle tool. I'm going to specify a width of 350 and a height of 200. I'm going to select create and I'm just going to drag this into roughly the right position above the front wall. I have specified a height of 200 which will actually give an overhang of about two and a half centimeters. I'm just going to create a tiling effect on the roof of this. So to do this I'm just going to zoom in. I'm going to create a circle centered around the right hand corner like so. And then I'm just going to specify a radius of 17 and a half millimeters. And then I'm going to open the node editing tool. And I'm just going to zoom into this a bit more. And then I'm going to hover over the two nodes that are on the horizontal. And I'm just going to, as I'm hovering over them, press C. And this will cut them like so. And we can get rid of the top half of the circle. Now we have a semicircle of which the center is on the right hand corner and of a diameter of 35 millimeters. So we can just select this, switching back to the normal select mode. I'm just again going to use the block copy and rotate tool and I'm just going to block copy this 11 times with a gap of zero. And as you can see we now have the effect of a tile. So what I'm going to do next is just holding control. I'm just going to drag this down so the tiles overlap each other like so and then select all of these and then block copy and rotate 
This time I'm going to put one column and seven rows, again with a zero millimeter gap. I'm just going to switch the Y direction and I select apply. I'm just going to group all of these vectors together, select the roof, select the outer roof, reselect all these group vectors, then use the vector clipping tool. I want to clip these inside and trimming all the vectors which go outside of the roof vector. So I'm just going to clip these and as you can see it is now being constrained to the roof. So now I'm going to create the roof for the back of the nesting box. To do this I'm just going to use the create rectangle tool. I'm going to create a rectangle of width 350 millimeters and a height of 176 millimeters. Now the reason this is a shorter rectangle is because we don't want this to overlap on the rear of the nesting box as this may cause problems when you try and attach it to a tree. So I'm just going to select create and then again drag this into roughly the correct position above the rear of the nesting box. Now we don't have to repeat the same process to create the tiling effect on the back of the nesting box. We simply have to just select all of these vectors, deselect the outer box. We can then hold and control, just drag this across to the other roof. And now we have the pattern on both roofs. I'm just going to group these vectors, then select the vector around the outside of the roof, reselect the vectors that make the tiling pattern, and again use the vector clipping tool to clip the vectors inside and trimming any overlapping vectors. And there we have the tiling effect on both the front and the back roof. The next thing we're going to need to do is create the floor for this design. So I'm just going to create a rectangle for this. I'm going to specify the dimensions of 350 millimeters wide and 300 millimeters high. Now the extra 50 millimeters in length compared to the sides of the nesting box will allow for the depth of the front and back walls and will also create a bit of an overhang creating a veranda effect. So I'm just going to select create and then just drag this down to below the back wall. I'm just going to select all these vectors and then move them upwards to give us a bit more space. So the next thing I'm going to do is create the stand for this bird box in order for you to attach it to a tree. I'm just going to create a rectangular piece of wood of width 50 millimeters and a height 400 millimeters. I'm just going to select create and then drag this down like so. And then you can use this to attach the bird box to the tree. Then I'm going to create a support for this. So I'm just going to use the create rectangle tool to create a square of 200 millimeters. Just select create and then drag this down to underneath the front wall. And I'm just going to use the node editing tool to cut the vector at these two nodes. Then select the bottom half and just delete it. Then I'm going to use the create polyline this time with a smooth polyline. I'm just going to draw polyline like so. Reopen up the node editing tool. Just edit the shape slightly until I'm happy with this. Like so. So now we have all the different parts that we need to create this nesting box. So all we need to do now is just create the tool paths to help the CNC machine cut it out. You may wish to rearrange each of these panels in order to create a better efficiency or to fit the dimensions of your CNC machine. You can actually get a nesting module in ArtCam Express which will create the most efficient way of cutting these sections out. The tool paths that I'm going to use are just an example and you may wish to change these in order to fit your CNC machine and your design. So the first toolpath I'm going to create is the V-bit 
carving tool path to carve out the detail in the roof. So I'm just going to select all the roof tile vectors and deselecting the roof boundaries. And I'm going to click on tool paths. I'm going to create a profile tool path. I want this to go along the vectors. And I want a finish depth of two millimeters. I'm going to use a V-bit carving tool for this. And then checking that the save Z height is above the material thickness. I'm just going to calculate this. Then I'm going to create V-bit tool paths for the banister rails. So I'm just going to select all four of these. Create a profile tool path again along the vectors. Finish depth of a millimeter. Select a 90 degree V-bit carving tool. I'm just going to calculate this. The next thing I'm going to do is carve out the holes in the banisters. I'm just going to select all of these vectors like so and then create a rest area clearance toolpath. I'm going to have a start depth of zero because I want it to start at the top of the material and I want a finish depth of three millimeters as I want it to carve into the material by three millimeters. I'm going to select a tool for this and I'm actually going to use a 1.5 millimeter end mill as I want to keep as much detail as possible. I'm just going to select that and calculate the tool paths. And then I'm going to create holes for the windows and the entrance. So I'm just going to select all of these vectors. Create a rest area clearance tool path. This time I want a finish depth of 15 millimeters as I want it to go the whole way through the material and I'm going to use a 3 millimeter end mill now we have carved out all the detail we can actually cut out these different sections so I'm just going to select all the outer vectors of the different walls and components and I'm going to create a profile tool path and I want this to go outside of the vectors I want it to have a finish depth of 15 millimeters I want it to go the whole way through I'm going to select a 6 millimeter end mill for this job and then I'm just going to calculate this once we've got all our tool paths we can see the tool paths on the project tree and then I'm going to simulate all these tool paths So as you can see, we now have the different constituent parts that will make up the birdhouse. We can just get rid of the waste material from the simulation by right clicking on the simulation, selecting delete waste material and then selecting the waste material like so. And this is the different parts that we need to create to make the bird box. So the next thing you'll need to do is just assemble these all together and you can actually use wood glue which is safe for birds or nails but don't nail down the front roof section use a hinge for this which you can use leather a non-rust hinge or even some rubber from a bike tire because you'll need to clean this box out in autumn